morning, this is uh, Talking to the Mac just, and Mutes News, combining again this week to um, discuss some of the world's affairs and uh, I guess 24, a little, a little over 24 hours ago I was thinking, well, what, what are Newton and I going to be talking about? But um, it's now impossible to avoid talking about what happened in, it is, in Paris it over is. the last 30 hours. Well, I've, I've watched and talked, listened and read uh, and I'm still little numb myself, even mm. though I'm completely remote from the whole thing. How on earth it must feel to be over there. Yes. Um, and in our context, to be a Jew living in Paris now, um, you might feel that you're not the only target, of course. That's right. You might right. feel that the target's much broader. A much broader, absolutely. Um, but, you know, just sitting having a coffee uh, and on the streets of Paris now is, is, is going to be a dangerous thing to do. Um, almost it, it, it reminded me, by the way, when yeah. Last time I was in Israel, walking through Jerusalem and get, going to restaurants, and there's armed guards outside checking you as you as you go in, and, and you think, my goodness, isn't it good that we live in a lucky country where we don't have to do things like that, as I'm sure Parisians were thinking as well. Well, they'll do uh, everything they can to try and ensure they, they can continue to do that. That's right. But I'm quite sure the streets today will be filled with army, police, well, uh, security. Oh, they are. But uh, one of the really interesting things, I think, was that citizens were advised to stay indoors, mm. uh, not to move out, uh, yet they have um, they have come out in, in a show of solidarity with each other uh, in their thousands in the streets of Paris, which is a, um, a really brave uh, and a, a very heartening thing to see it is happen. I, I, I guess one of the aspects I'd like to talk about, which has bobbed up a little bit, is is that um, it, it's not. It's only a week ago that there were bombs that went off in Beirut, killing I can't remember exactly how 40. many people. Forty-seven, I think it was mm. uh, people, uh, and yet that hardly made a blip in the news here. Whereas when it's in a country that is so culturally close to the West, our own country, uh, obviously we're all the West, uh, it's, it's, it's much more shocking, it brings it home much more closely. Well, I, I can't help but think that there will be Israelis thinking, well perhaps now you'll understand what it is that we are fighting for. Exactly. Um, and what we're going through every day, indeed. and have been for, well, well, since 1948. Pretty much. Yes. It's, uh, it's a different sort of enemy, it's, it's certainly uh, one that could crop up at any time, but the the fact is, the the media attention is intense to the degree that you, you can't you can't move today. I'm sh I haven't even seen the papers. I haven't particularly listened to the radio, or TV, but it will be wall to wall. It is wall to wall. The problem is, of course, once the three days of mourning passes, uh, things die down just a little bit. Everybody's wondering what's actually going on in the background to stop it, and can well, they stop it? Th well, th this is the real critical issue. I I think it is that. ISIS or ISIL or Daesh or whatever we want to call them. We've got to call them Daesh. It's, we, should be calling, we shouldn't be calling them, calling them a state, mm. I, I believe, because that's what they want us to call them. Uh, and they're not a state, they're a bunch of thugs and terrorists. Uh, but they have a strategy. They have a clear strategy, and that is to disrupt the West, to um, cause fear... And, and I think slowly out of that in response to slowly erode some of the freedoms that we so enjoy that allow them to carry out the attacks they do because because our, our security forces need to clamp down more. They want to find out about what's happening before things happen. Well, you kind of and, feel that, we're, we're and, and that means taking away a little bit of our freedom. We're, we're lo but we are losing that battle. From what, I, from what I can see, I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of people saying, well, then, you know, they're concentrating all on the, uh, the internet. Uh, they're not actually concentrating enough on people Absolutely. stuff. Yeah. Because most of what was the three teams that, that hit Paris hit by virtue of the, um, the fact that they were talking to each other. They weren't actually necessarily texting and celebrating Correct. each other. So clearly we, we, we're behind the eight ball when it comes to how they're going about planning these attacks. And, and not only that, I, I, I think the strategic approach from the West is, well, it's very lacking. I don't think there is a strategy yet. I think, I, I think it's, it's very responsive. And how do you deal with uh, an enemy that is really cloaked 
Uh, yeah. You don't know who these people are. They're walking around amongst you one no, day, no, no, and no. then they're carrying out suicide missions the next. If we go back to the end of the Second World War, as I recall, we came together under the United Nations. Now, it's a bit like the uh, the FIFA. You know, how well has that gone for us across yeah. the world? How well has the UN done in ensuring that we we never have to go through this again? The reality is, I saw a friend of mine today posted on Facebook, this is World War Three. If you were in any doubt before this weekend, be in no doubt now. Yeah. And you wonder, what is the UN's response per se? It, it seems almost redundant at this stage. They're, they're, they're there as a means of collecting an operational response but your point about strategy is really interesting because I for one I mean if there is a strategy and God knows we hope the leaders well I don't think there is one at the moment I really don't well no wonder we're we're all sitting ducks there but but it's very hard to deal with an enemy that um, lives amongst you doesn't wear a uniform doesn't fly a flag until it sort of pulls it out of a back, a, back, a, a rucksack mm. uh, so you don't know what's really going on so then uh, are we are we heading into a sort of a McCarthyism well, era that's, that, where, um, that, that, that's if I don't like the that's look of you the problem. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be dobbing you that's, into some authority and, and of course that then has a, a whole bunch of implications for uh, how we Reevaluate the debate on migration, ref- oh, yeah. refugee policy, and, and I thought it was very interesting that our Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull, one of the first statements he made was uh, coming out saying, "Yes, we stand shoulder to shoulder with the French," uh, but he coming out saying, "What a we are the most successful multicultural nation in the world." So. Oh, we that, might that, be really that, successful at multiculturalism, but, no question. But, but I think that's an interesting positioning, because it it's not the sort of positioning you would have got from Tony Abbott. Oh, uh, I see your point. So I, 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 I think there is a significant change in the language, if nothing if nothing else. Well, that, that, that may be it, and, and he is very good at his language, after all. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd agree that we've been successful in our multiculturalism, but have we been successful in, in understanding how... Uh, the Islamic community integrates with the non-Islamic community. I mean, we can say the same about well, the Jewish the, community. Well, that's, that's the underlying question, it isn't is. it? And, and really, we, we shy away from it for political correctness reasons. I spend far too much of my day worrying about what I'm saying and how I'm saying it than actually having honest conversations. Yes. Uh, and I think that's time now that we actually did that. How do, do, how do we want to relate... I, in fact, in the news this week, I saw funding being cut from the, the six Isla- Is- Islamic schools in Australia. Yes. Obviously, there's, there's some concerns about... There were about some governance issues. Some governance issues. Which is a nice way of saying that they were misusing well, their exactly. funds. Well, there, exactly. Is there, but is there more around that politically than we understand? And, Probably. You know, obviously, not knowing the full facts, I'm jumping to one conclusion. I, I want to understand from my, my Islamic, my Muslim friends exactly how they feel about being misrepresented, not represented, misrepresented by this this dreadful uh, war war of terror that, that, that's raining down on the rest of the world. Because obviously... They well, it's raining down on them as well. It appears to be... Well, it'll, it'll rain down on them in a far greater and, and way than it And if you look at what's been previously. happening in, in Beirut, uh, where else have there been explosions? There, well, we uh, had the Russian airliner come down. The Russian which, airliner, um, yep. was straight out of uh, straight out of Egypt. We're obviously feeling like a very insecure world at the moment because there's, so it's there's, not just the West that's being challenged. No. Uh, and I mean, there are there there is the battle between Sunni and Shia, but there's all, and then there's the battle between Islamists, and I'm not sure exactly who they all are. No, uh, well, it's very confusing in that sense. I'm not sure who they all are, but that they are clearly targeting the West. I think it's very typical of the Australian public, though, to talk about it with a great ferocity and then say, "Did you see the footy this weekend?" Yeah, because that's what Australians tend to do. They are wrong time of the year. It, oh, sorry, cricket. sorry, cricket. Ah, oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Yes, you can just tell how sporty I am. Exactly. Not. But the, the fact is they don't focus on international news. Not very much at to all. To anything like the degree that the rest of the world does. And I mean, we, we obviously share that interest because of our common understanding of what goes on in Israel. That's right. And, and to a, you're a travelled individual, you, you've been to Europe. It kind of, it, it's kind of reflective of the fact that, that 
people don't leave Australia in great numbers every oh, year. Oh, I'm not sure about that. I think Australians are great travellers now, but but well, I, I think part of the reason is we're, we're pretty isolated. When things happen in Paris, even though it touches us mm. and it's, it's it's clouded our media for 24 hours mm. non-stop. Um, we do get on. We want to know what's happening in the test today. We want to, you know, we, we really, we really live w- far away from North America and from Europe, mm. uh, the other centres of the Western see, world. And see, I've been here ten years, and I feel since I've been here, the world's just shrunk year after year. Of course, it year. has. So I feel as close to those people who are holidaying in Paris, living in Paris, uh, and of course I've got my own family in the UK and in Israel, I feel as close to them sitting here uh, as I would if they, if I was living in a, a city in France or a city in Britain and I just happen to be outside of the immediate event. Yes. I, I, don't, I don't see distance as a, as a barrier to that. Not anymore. But no. I think up here... We, 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 in Australia, we do separate ourselves. And maybe we do. You're right because, do. because of the distance. I, th- I think I think the distance is quite an issue, mm. uh, even though we're all connected all the time. So whether the Prime Minister's words um, are more hollow as a result, I mean, he'll be travelling shortly, won't he? No, he's travelling now. He was in Germany when the event occurred. He's now in Turkey for the G20 meeting. Okay. Um, so G twenty is going to obviously be dominated. G twenty will be happening while while uh, while we're broadcasting on Wednesday. Right. So um, it'll be very interesting to see. Well, there's all what sorts, happens sorts there. of other things coming up. We've got a uh, climate a climate change meeting coming up in November in uh, Paris. In Paris, that that'll be interesting to see whether the the city is ready to to take a, what well, is it? Yes. Well, they, they have said that they're going to, that, that they will go ahead. And, and you've got to think also uh, what immense security rearrangements must have been made in Turkey overnight as well. Yes, that's most most likely to be the case, although these guys are, are targets in such, you know, such wherever they, regular, are. Wherever they right. are. I imagine it's, uh, there's only so much security that you can put on, just keep everyone up. You know, with two kilometers away from everyone else. That's right.